I was the general chair of Asia Crypt last year, so I'm assuming that I was asked to do this as punishment for not warning the organizers how much work it is. But uh, I do want to thank the organizers. They've done a great job, and uh, I think we're all having, a, having an excellent time. So the excellent time is, I'm sure, going to continue uh, during this short but very sweet rump session. Uh, to the rump session speakers, uh, I hope you remember more or less which order you're speaking, which is uh, Xavier Forrest, Morandi, Chitty and Soup, Song, and so on. <laughs> I can't quite remember the order myself. Anyway, but we're, wh while, while, the, while the speakers are speaking, if, you can, if you're the next speaker, if you can go up and get your microphone on so that we can keep the slides going around. I've got the slide thing which I'll hand on to the, to the speaker. I've got the uh, clicker, so I'll hand them to the speaker and then bring them back. Two, 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 testing, two, two, two. Two, one, two. Do you realize that uh, roadies at, uh, for bands, they can't count past two. It's always one, two, two. What comes next? Two. Are you happy? That's right. A computer science, a good joke. Computer science roadies count zero, one. So it doesn't test the microphone. Two, two. All right. You, you guys happy? I can talk louder if necessary. All right, so <laughs> there's breaking news. I don't know if any of you realize this, but I've recently learned of a very surprising announcement. Some of you may well be aware that recently Peter Shaw announced a quantum algorithm that might potentially kill Lattice cryptography. Oded Regev quickly came to the rescue and informed us that, uh, I can't read this, but uh, that there's some security issue and there's nothing to worry about. But just moments ago, I saw on Twitter a tweet which you can't read, but uh, that Peter Shaw has announced that uh, his, he's fixed the problem in his preprint. And I'm going to keep you informed with updates on this important situation as the rump session continues. But next, we have Xavier Boyen. All right. Sorry? OK. I brought the clock. So um, I am going to talk to you about human deci humanly decipherable public key encryption. And uh, this is actually a serious talk, although it might well read. So uh, as we know, we all like to do fantasy line cryptography where Alice and Bob will engage into a protocol. The protocol here doesn't matter, but they engage in a protocol and magically they perform the operations and things happen, right? Well, in reality, it's, more, it's a, bit a little bit different. We have uh, Alice uses a, a device, but Bob uses a device, and the device are going to act on their behalf, right? Well, actually not quite, because in reality, it's more like this, because the device comes with these nice, uh, you know, uh, oogly eyes and uh, the evil eye of so on, as we all know since 2013. And we, we, who knows even what Alice and Bob may even have to say on, about the, about the, uh, on the protocol anymore. So the question in, in that, what do we do about that? Well, uh, yes? Should I rewind? Uh, you have more time. This one doesn't seem to be working very well. All right. So just use this one. It's also feeding back. Okay, you might. <laughs> Testing. Testing. All right. No, that doesn't work, does it? Can you hear me? <laughs> All right. So we are trying to. Uh, <laughs> So is that a yes or no? No. No. I'll try to shout, all right? Hello? Okay, that, 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 sounds, that sounds better. Okay. So uh, we like to do cryptography and... <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, maybe like this. If I stick it to my mouth. Okay, so we like to do cryptography with in idealized models. Alice and Bob do two things, right? In reality, they actually use devices to do uh, to engage in, in the protocol, and actually, actually, we know that uh, the devices actually cannot really be trusted anymore because uh, they don't really belong to you. They they don't do they, they don't do uh, all and exactly what you instruct them to do. Um, so that is the sad reality of computing these days. So what can we do about that? Well, one possibility is to try to do cryptography without the devices, and that sounds a bit a bit difficult, but. Um, I am trying, I will, tr I, will pr I will be suggesting a, uh, one way to perhaps attack this problem. So uh, what I'm proposing is a strong public key encryption system, emphasis on strong, so it, ac it is actually uh, secure, at it would be secure under some assumptions at the, at the level that we will be needed for, for, no for, for cryptography, that is e entirely decipherable by a human. Now of course, don't expect miracles, the bandwidth is going to be very slow, and we will need to, we will need to remember an 80-bit at least key in order to achieve any kind of, of, uh, of usable security, because we're talking about public key cryptography, right? Okay, so how does it work? Um, there, are, there are a bunch of little programs that we can run, and the ciphertext will be shown to the user as something like that. I'm going to, I'm going to skip about key generation and uh, encryption, <laughs> but the decryption, uh, the ciphertext looks, um, looks like something like that. And uh, so the secret key, if we assume that the secret key is, so here we have uh, essentially, this is, this is a calendar. Not actually that way, but it, we have days over here, we have months over here. If my secret key is July the 4th and December 25, plus January 1st, I do, we, we always add that. But how do I decrypt? I find July, to, ju ju uh, July 4th over here. I uh, find uh, December 24, uh, 25, uh, 25th over here. And I and I have January first. I add the, all the angles together, and what do I have? So I have a little, a little something to the, to the left. I have a little big. I have a big one to the right, and I have something uh, half an, uh, like a square, uh, a square. Uh, sorry, a, rect a right angle to the left. When you add them to get together, it's 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 about zero. So the message will be zero if you get acute and acute angle, and one if you get an acute angle. We can also do better. We can do rocks where now we can encrypt mode 12 or maybe even mode 24. Again, my public key is July 4th, July 4th, this guy, December 25th, this guy, and first that, that guy, fourth. I will add the times together. With the microphone in my hands, it's gonna be a bit difficult. Five, let's try. All right, so we start at nine o'clock, January 1st. Thank you, Stephen. All right, we start here. <laughs> then we add um, uh, July the 4th, which is about 10.30. An hour and a half. Yeah. Okay. All right, and then we add this over here, which is uh, about four and a half. So I add four and a half, and this is over here. Let's go. One, two. Four, it's midnight. So midnight means, or noon, whatever, would mean the letter A, right? The letter A table are displayed as part of the, of the visualization, of the map. And uh, so apologize to all the other Xavier's and maybe Clara's in the room. Those X and Z, maybe you can just drop them. I might drop them to you. Doesn't matter, right? So um, you don't have to use dates. You can use pin numbers, four-digit pin numbers. So that should work on my computer, but I don't yet. Not the pin, not so sure. So if the key is one, two, three, four, but here, so one thousand two hundred uh, thirty one two zero one two three one two three four. It's this little wedge over here. I will add that to the to the to that, and I get again in this case the message will be zero. Okay, so does it, is it is this for real? Yes, it is. It's practical, and if you want 80 bit security, five random ingredients work with this. I'm not saying that it work in the in this in this example, but it's on paper. Or we can use seven pins, whatever. And uh, it's lattice based, so that we <coughs> oh, I have, have some bad news later today. Uh, it's um, and it's a reduction from 
an assumption that halfway between cis and LWE is a bit different than, than cis because, or LWE because uh, we are working with very, very low entropy uh, secrets, much lower than that is, that is not a system we normally do, so we have to add some more noise to compensate for that. Uh, but there are no known attacks other than generic. And, the, the, and what, what we get, uh, human, uh, we can already use that for human, for universally reusable uh, remote en uh, encryption, authentication, sorry. And um, so, vive la révolution, cryptography for the people, strong public key, one good passphrase to remember, you have to remember it. Your device does not learn your secret, no, no, decks, of, no uh, decks of cards, no captures, no gimmicks. And uh, the security is based on the on the on the uh, LWE-like assumption, or cis like assumption, and the, the best known attack is uh, meet in the middle, the generic, generic attack. And uh, I I also have some strategies how to do that. If you don't want to remember why the size of the group, you can remember all those. That's it. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Xavier. Is Amir here? You're Amir. So I announced that uh, Peter Shaw has uh, fixed his paper. You'll be happy to know that uh, Oded Regev has very quickly, um, no, no, I've gone too far. I do this. <laughs> Oded Regev has quickly come to the uh, fore. I don't know if you can read what he says. Uh, I don't quite understand it, double TTF. Um, I said it's wrong, it's still wrong. So um, I'll, I'll have more to follow on this uh, in, in the near future. I don't know, he gave me the microphone. Oh, I see if it works. Still, Still not. I mean, this is pretty useful, I think. Yeah, it's working, I believe. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, probably you don't see much here. <laughs> yeah, it's about, you see now? Okay. A um, couple of you probably know that uh, the skinny cipher is out since uh, crypto 2016 this year. And actually, uh, we are pretty a large team from Germany, Denmark, France, Japan, and also uh, Singapore. And um, the specification of the work, um, the results, updates will be are all available in the Google website of the Skinny. And actually, what I'm trying to motivate here and say here is about the cryptanalysis of a Skinny. And then we are def definitely appreciating the external analysis, which can be done by the community. Um, some information about the skinny, very little, that uh, it has two versions, let's say two main versions, 64-bit and 128-bit, and then we have three different versions of the block size, which is tweakable, uh, with a size of, uh, let's say, 64-bit or 128-bit or 256 for the 46, uh, for the 64-bit 64, 64 version, and then also so on for the other version. Um, for example, here, skinny 64 with 128, has 36 rounds and skinny 128 with a tweak key of 120 has 40 rounds, which is here. Okay, uh, the attack that we have performed till now uh, reached 18 rounds by the designer. I mean, the team could reach up to 18 rounds to perform successful attacks. And then this is actually the point that we are uh, we are trying we are uh, trying to motivate the external analysis based on the skinny by announcing um, a competition. Uh, and very reduced round, re reduced version of a skinny. Um, some examples of some categories that we have defined. We have defined five categories. The first, we have, uh, if you could reach 26 rounds of a skinny 64, 128, or 30 rounds of the other version. I mean, I, if, I, I hope that you see here 30 rounds for this version, which has 40 rounds in, in general, and in, in uh, original one and then 26 uh, for the other version which has 36 rounds or the other category if you reach 28 rounds and 24 rounds on this side um, for each of them we have defined some um, some um, bonds for the for the number of rounds the radius round version and then if uh, you could actually get to the first category you get five present from each country of course we will decide what you get uh, but you will get one present up it's much better one present from Germany, one, of, one from Denmark, one from Japan, France, and on Singapore. And for each of the other categories that you reach, we, we reduce one of the presents. Of course, you can decide which, which, from which countries you want to have the, the present. Good, some rules. Um, the, the we will, or let's say the designer team will, defi will, design, uh, sorry, will, will decide about the best attacks submitted after the deadline. And then um, 
uh, but main criteria is actually uh, the final complexity computations, data complexity, memory complexity, of course, clear. And um, um, application to the skinny variations or variants and also novelty and then the model of the attack and so on. Um, we, we try to uh, somehow um, consider any type of the attacks, but of course it's not possible. For instance, we are not still sure about whether we are going to consider big leak attacks as an as a accelerated brute force or not, but we should decide about this later if the attack is very sophisticated and then the result is very good, why not? But if it's re going to reduce, the, let's say, the complexity um, half a bit or a bit less than a half a bit, then we, don't, we are not actually currently sure that we consider big leak, big leak attacks. Um, we for sure consider single key and related key attacks. Um, um, related software attacks will not be uh, quantified. And also, it is, uh, should be known that Tweak is, uh, is also allowed for up to 64 bit for a skinny 64 128, for example. But in this case, the security is bonded to 2 to the k, where the key is, 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 the, key, is the key size. Um, um, of course, the attacks uh, from the skinny document, I mean, what we have already published in the website, um, um, uh, contains already existing attacks, and of course, it cannot be qualified. And if some attacks are similar, of course, the first one, which is submitted, has the priority. Um, of course, the government agencies uh, can also participate in the computation. Uh, co competition. Of course, the designers of uh, those two popular uh, light bit block softwares are actually pushed somehow. They are also uh, allowed to participate in the, in the competition. And uh, the last slide is that we already have it started. This is the second announcement of this competition. Uh, we have already four papers in ePrint about the skinny since, uh, since crypto this year. Um, and then it seems that the maximum number of rounds that it could be reached up to now is 22 rounds. We are uh, actually happy about this because it's better than what we have also already considered. And the deadline for the submission is 1st of March 2017, which allows us actually to, um, to uh, have the, the, the final results and announcement in the next FSE. The attacks should be submitted to this email address. Of course, this email address is available on the web page of the Skinny software as well. And um, uh, we should be considered that in the submissions with uh, which countries you want to get the gift, if, of course, your attack qualifies uh, one of these categories. OK, that was all. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Amir. <laughs> I'm oh, very pleased of this. This is a name I can pronounce. The next talk is by Chichinok Cheng. Ch <laughs> Damn! Chichinok Cheng Sechinso. Here's your thing. Thank you very much. Is the microphone working? Yeah. I see. Okay. Is it working? Okay. Talk loudly. Is it working? Okay. No. Louder. Oh, I can hold it like. Is it working? Okay. I'm kind of shy being in front of a lot of people, so <laughs> I prefer standing here. Is it okay? <laughs> okay, my um, I will say my name again. My name is Chichanok Chung Satian Sap, and <laughs> well, it's quite close. Well, thank you for <laughs> your attention. And this is um, joint work with Dan Bernstein and Tanya Langer. First, I would like to show you a timeline of the speed of scalar multiplication. And in this case, I focus on single scalar multiplication, as in, for example, in key exchange. Um, and blue dots here show scalar multiplication using double base chain, and black dots is for single base chain. And around 2007 and eight, and here is the speed around, well, both use either a single base or a double base has about the same speed. But later on, there is an improvement to single base scalar multiplication and um, scalar multiplication cost has dropped to only 1,950. And um, in AstroCrypt 2014, there was a paper 
speeding, um, um, presenting optimal uh, near optimal control using double base chain, and um, in that in that case they consider pre uh, they didn't consider pre computation. So the set S here is for pre computation, and the cost of using double base is not that good. But I have a new result which speeding up scalar multiplication using double base chain. And I also has a new result for single base as well with um, by using different sets of pre-computation. And I obtained this result by using new tripling formulas and also uh, DAG or directed uh, cyclic, cyc cyclic graph search for optimal chains. So the met method is as follows. We propose a new, we found faster point tripling formulas, and these formulas are for Twisted Edwards curve. And we reduce one squaring, so from previous cost using nine, uh, nine field multiplication and for field squaring we reduce to only nine field multiplication and three field squaring. And for information about these formulas, you can find it on the website explicit formulas database. And we also improve the way of how to find the chain to, to for representing scalar. And instead of using tree, we're using a graph. Specifically, we use directed cyclic graph. And we also speed it up by working, instead of uh, working with a full size scalar, we, are, we work with reduce, uh, residual classes. And at each step, so in previous algorithm, they just factor out all two and three, and so they're trying to, re trying to really reduce the number of addition. But in our algorithm, we do the opposite. We always perform addition. But I will tell you later why by doing so, it can at the end, we can improve the overall performance of scalar multiplication. So I would like to show you this picture because it's kind of cool. So instead of using three, uh, three, we use graph and we actually use three dimensional graph. And here is example of graph for finding a chain for representing number 17. And now I would like to say about extra addition why algorithm does not always completely factor out two and three. Is it really useful to consider addition every single step? Of course, the answer is yes. For example, the number 28. If we always factor out two and three, then first we would factor out four, and then we will left with seven, and the chain would be two times three plus one. And in this case, well, I showed cost here and the total cost for for factor out, completely factor out would be 44.6. But if we consider extra addition at the beginning, then the cost is only 43.4. And you may wonder, because the extra addition at each step, is it really useful for the computation of generating the chain? Even though the evaluation is better, but for, uh, for generating the chain, is it really better? And we answer this by using residual classes. Like I said previously, instead of computing on the full scalar, we compute on residual classes. For example, in this case, we want to find a chain for 1,357, which, which is 11 bits. But we don't work with that 11 bits. We do, we modulo to, to two square times three square. So the number that we work with is 25, which is only five bits. And you can imagine if we have two 56 bit integer, we modulo something and we work on smaller, much smaller numbers. And here is graph um, for, for, for 25 and, and to compute the full the whole full numbers we just repeatedly compute the subgraph. For example, in this case we compute first subgraph and move to 
next subgraph, and so on, until we really f uh, find the whole chain to represent that number. And I would like to show you the result. And the result that I show here, I separate it into the case of pre-computation, using pre-computation and no pre-computation. And comparison also between using double base chain and, and single base chain. And this is the result for single scalar multiplication. And I highlighted in blue is our new result. And I also would like to say that our algorithm can extend to computation of double, double scalar multiplication. And for example, computation in signature verification. And in this table, we compare two previous results of using three and also using single base of sliding windows. And our other is our new result, stands for reduce, uh, rec rec reduce rectangular base directed assay graph. And as you can see, we really reduce the cost of scalar multiplication a lot. So thank you very much. Uh, song, song here. Next. Okay, so <coughs> I've also just learned there is a further update in the uh, ongoing battle between giants. Um, Peter Shaw has in fact just updated his archive paper. The title has now changed to A Total Break of Regev's Learning with Errors. And uh, the abstract is a bit strange. He, he's accusing Oded Regev of being so smart he never makes any errors. And if you do learning with errors and you don't make any errors, then, then it's not secure. So um, we can only hope that Peter Shaw's mental health will improve uh, very soon. Okay. So now uh, Yongsu Song is going to tell us about lizards. Okay. Uh, hi, hi everyone. Good evening. Um, my name is Yong Soo Song, and I'm from Korea, um, South Korea. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't be. Please don't be confused with North Korea. We don't have nuclear weapon, and we don't hurt you. Okay. And can you hear? Me? Everyone can hear me. Okay. And everyone can see me. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, um, this, this talk is about uh, post-quantum practical PKE, and it's a brief summarization of uh, invited talk that was done by program chair Jung Uh that was done in post-quantum Asia forum last month in Korea, South. And <laughs> I believe that uh, all of you already have seen these kinds of slides hundreds of times, so I skip the definition of learning with errors problem. But uh, I just want to point out that uh, uh, Redis cryptography is just a very strong candidate of post-quantum cryptography because of its uh, powerful security. We have something uh, kind of worst case to average case reductions, and um, yeah, its speed is very fast, but the problem is its size. Okay, so the first construction was done by Regev in 2005 by combining learning with errors and leftover hash lemma. So the public key is just uh, many, many, many instances of uh, learning with errors problem. And we just compute the subset sum of many random subset sum of instances. So we just uh, sample binary string R. But the problem is uh, to use of leftover hash lemma, the M should be very large uh, to achieve enough en entropy for randomization. So the uh, next try was, was done by combination of LWE and LWE again. That means uh, by, uh, based on this public information, we make an uh, encryption by the same subset sum, but additionally we add some error, E prime and E double prime. Uh, 
then this ciphertext forms uh, again a uh, learning with error sample together with the public information. So we can reduce the number of samples are a little, but the still we have some problem with uh, Gaussian sampling because in this case, increasing process requires discrete Gaussian sampling in and it takes uh, comparably expensive, like uh, you can you need a long random binary string, for example, or it cannot be written in uh, very few lines of code. So our approach is here. So the name is lizard because uh, uh, because we can cut the tail of lizard. That means after we some adding many uh, LW instances. Instead of uh, adding more error, we just cut the, it's, uh, the least significant of bits. So for example, here, uh, the modulus Q has nine bits, for example, but the resulting polynomial is just has seven bits for each mod modulus. So the maybe uh, I should talk about the security of this scheme. But uh, this scheme is based on the running with rounding problem. That is, uh, instead of r adding errors, we just remo remove its uh, least significant bits. So uh, one LWR samples is something like this. So, uh, but uh, for a long time, we didn't have any efficient reduction. But uh, recently, in uh, the paper will be published in TCC. So the Learning the rounding problem is no easier than LW problem when the Q is large or the number of samples are small. So, and the second result is exactly one we need. So, uh, we just publish very a uh, few number of samples. So, to sum up, uh, our scheme is based on both the LW and LWR, but uh, thanks to the reduction, we only need the uh, hardness assumption of uh, running the error problem. And uh, we analyze the security of the scheme following the framework of, of some nice post-quantum cryptography researches, uh, including Frodo and New Hope about key exchange. And we extended their analysis to running the rounding problem. So and you can convert our scheme into the in the CCA version uh, using random quantum random oracle model by modified Fujisaka Okamoto conversion. Okay, so this is our implementation result. Uh, uh, because we are not so professional recording, so this is not so optimized. So this implementation result is still improving, but uh, it's already so fast, super fast. For example, t encryption just takes 0 0.00 second millisecond. It means the seven microsecond second for 120 bits of quantum security. And for more information, please refer this e-print. And thank you for attention. The next talk is by Takeshi Koshiba. Oh, I'm loud. I think you only have ah, one slide, actually. Just one slide. Just one slide. <laughs> Great. OK, uh, my name is Takeshi Koshiba, and I'm from Saitama, Japan. So this is just an announcement of I the next ICITF. The ICITF 2017 is the 10th conference on information theory, security conference at security. So the so the conference will be held in Hong Kong just before the next Asia Crypt. So the any other so just just before the Asia Crypt. So the any any results on the information theoretical security is welcome for submission. Also the computational results by using the information theoretical technique are also welcome. So and the deadline is around. June, uh, around June, so this is just tentative, but the tentative. So the uh, organizing by K 
Kenneth Chum, and uh, PC Chair by Jun Shikata. We are looking forward to your submission and uh, joining the next ICITS. Thank you. And our next speaker is Christophe Petit. Okay, I don't have an update on Shor's algorithm, I'm afraid. Okay, uh, so, but we do have a lattice-based uh, spring school coming up in Oxford, so I hope uh, everybody here will be able to attend. Uh, the schedule will be March 24 to 27. Uh, we especially targeting PhD students and early career researchers, so please send us send our st your students. Uh, it's actually free for students. Uh, location is amazing. It's uh, Mathematical Institute, University of Oxford, Andrew Wise Building. And yes, you might uh, come across him. Uh, we have an early registration deadline, December 15, so hurry up. Uh, we've booked some uh, room in a nice college, so if you want to uh, take advantage of this, you should register now. And yeah, that's our website. Thanks very much, Christoph. Yeah. More news, more news. The plot thickens. Uh, Oded Regev has now put up another blog post. Uh, he has revisited uh, Peter Shaw's famous 1994 paper. Uh, he's realized that this paper relies fundamentally on the QFT. Uh, he's realized this is a quite false theorem. And he's concluded that factoring and discrete logs are in fact OK. They're still secure. So um, that's, that's good news. So we'll get on to our... Um, uh, wait. Well, that's right. It's all good. It's all good. Anyway, so our um, final talk in the rump session is these two guys. I will start with it. Okay. So, well, it's good news maybe that uh, Shor's algorithm... Well, actually, no. We rely on Shor's algorithm, but still. Um, well, yesterday with Jerome, uh, we had an interesting discussion. We came up with a nice result. We want to share it with you. Uh, we're able somehow to attack a variant of LWE in a quantum model. So, what does this variant look like exactly? Uh, so, it's uh, LWE... Uh, one point. Okay. Yeah, th there is... Well, I, I will... Okay. Uh, th th <laughs> So this LWE variant is LWE in a medium characteristic. So maybe it's not so well known. Uh, well, you start with your classical LWE parameters. You have the dimension, the noise parameter, and impo importantly, the frame modulus P, which we will call also the characteristic in this context. Then we get the volume Q equals P to the N, and medium characteristic is when these two P and Q numbers are related with this nice exponential uh, relation. And uh, so in this specific case for LWE, we're able to somehow save the Eldashore quantum LWE uh, algorithm uh, recently discussed. And uh, the thing is, unfortunately, well, we also have a few more nice results about this, but we needed quite more than the 10 slides limit for this RAM session. So not so much more, but then we hope just that Steven didn't cut too many things. Uh, so first, how, how do we solve uh, this variant of LWE? So we start with a rather elementary fact, uh, well known at least to the lattice community, that if you take a Gaussian, well, you can add a point at infinity and this gives you a group law. So, well, you get your Gaussian, if you want to add, say, those two points, then you trace, well, you, you get a line through them, it cuts the Gaussian through another point, then you reflect back with the y-axis and this gives you the addition. So now, because we have this point at infinity, then the Gaussian cycles. And because it cycles, then, well, we can use a Shor's algorithm uh, on this cycle to find the order, the secret order of the cycle. And basically, that's the intuition behind our algorithm, and it, it will solve, uh, well, basically, LWE in this context. So we have some uh, technical arguments, too. Unfortunately, only the last slide remains. Uh, so, but I, I think that it's quite obvious what was behind. So the, the last part of the, our fundamental lemma uh, we have this nice, uh, so first we start, we, we, we take the real part of this nice expression uh, where in particular, oh, this pointer is not so nice. I'm not sure I can jump, but see, so we have the secret with the estimate of the error that is taken to be 2.7, not so, well, uh, a rough estimate of E. Uh, and this we can bound 
upper bounded by this double sum over F1, uh, not too complex. And this we can also show that it's less than two pi r, where r is the radius of the fundamental circle of the lattice. Uh, so this solves the problem, and actually it, it, we even get a very immediate corollary that it works for Gaussian varieties of higher genus. So <laughs> we have here a hyper elliptic Gaussian of genus three, and uh, actually we can still attack this system. Uh, so now we'll let uh, Jérôme tell you about more exciting developments of these techniques. So I'm sorry to bother you with the mathematical details, but we are going to need a bit more computations here. Uh, so we need to prove a simple uh, but useful inequality, so we give a simple proof. <laughs> so <laughs> this is totally correct, by the way. So we need the first a short lemma, which is that one fourth is a strictly positive number. So why is it true? First, it is positive because it is a square, of course. It is a square of one half. And then there is a small technical lemma, which is, oops. Ah. Ah. Uh, Ah, okay, merci. Uh, so since uh, this is a cardinality of a field, this is not zero. So this is uh, four is invertible. So one fourth is also not zero. So since it is greater than zero and not zero, this is a strictly positive number. We know that this proof is not constructive, but uh, it is enough for us. So since one fourth is positive, one fourth to the square is also positive, and so on. So we can sum this geometric series, and the sum is one third which is therefore also a positive number, which is the lemma that we needed. So one third is a strictly positive number. So why is this very useful lemma? Well, actually from this we can derive the Goldbach theorem. So the Goldbach theorem, the Goldbach conjecture, sorry, but now it is a theorem, uh, is that any even integer is the sum of two primes. So up to now, the best result was this, which is that every even number is the sum of at most six primes. Now we take this, we divide by three. This means that one third of every even number is the sum of at most one third of six primes. <laughs> but now, this was the longest step in the whole proof, but one third of six is two, or more precisely factorial two. And this means that the probability for, an even num for a random even number of being the sum of two primes is greater than one third. So at least we won in one third of all cases, but it is not a big problem because if we did not win, we can prove, so I'm going to sh show you the proof, we can remind the proof, and using a forking lemma, we can always uh, suppose that we are in a case where th this is true. So basically this is always the case, and we just prove the Goldbach theorem. So now why does the forking lemma work? Steven. <laughs> no, not again. Okay. So I think there's a lot of stuff missing, so we, okay, I'm going to skip this. But we just solved the TWE problem in any dimension, so I can, ah, we do not have even the, the definition of TWE, that's too bad. So there's a teaching with errors problem, which is a variant of the Bivouille that we solve. Uh, so we put together all these terms that promise we will be uh, on, the, on the crypto mailing list. Uh, we send them to Regev and, uh, and Shaw. So we can prove this basically, the easy case is where n is an even number, so then we can write it as the sum of two prime numbers, and we just saw in the slide that we missed that uh, the theorem is true for a prime number, and we can decompose, so this is true for an even number, and now there is a much harder case where n is an odd number. And then there is a trick. In probabilistic polynomial time, we can find an even number that is greater than n, and then we simply embed the problem into an even case problem, which is solvable, and therefore the theorem is always true. And we have some quite exciting conclusion. I'm going to give the microphone back to Pierre for the end. Okay, so now, well, unfortunately, because Stephen uh, removed some of the slides, we only have the main result, but I think that's enough for you. And uh, also, well, we'll see what we get next. Okay, well, great. We have at least the first half of the summary. So, well, we first started by solving a learning with error in the mid characteristic case. And this allowed, uh, through some connection, uh, to prove the Goldbach's uh, strong theorem. And back to TWE, we th this allows us to solve it in both, for both even and odd primes, and actually any natural number. And uh, actually, we think that this is a major result for computer science and mathematics, not only for this century, but probably the two and three following centuries as well. And uh, the thing that's nice is that actually this very, very nice, important result can be summarized in a single slide 
using in particular a notation from slide number 278 that we didn't see. So, well, that's not too important. I think you can see it. So this next slide is, okay, it was cut too. So that's too bad. But the thing that's important you need to remember is that TWE, as we showed, implies P equal NP. And so we just solved this major problem and we're now quite happy. Thank you. So thank you, thank you, uh, Pierre and, and uh, Jerome. So this is almost the end of the rump session. So um, let me turn off one of these. So I think the um, the next task on the on the menu is to decide who's the winner of the best rump session talk. Um, so we're going to do this by going through, and you will you will applaud. So um, uh, so I think we should have some applause for uh, Xavier Boyen and his uh, visual cryptography. So that was the first talk. Okay, and then uh, vote number two is for Amir Morandi with the Skinny Cryptanalysis Competition. <laughs> it's unlucky. Chichinok Chewing Sithi and Sup for her talk on double base chains. <laughs> okay, good, good. Uh, number, f number four, I do have some very serious concerns about whether animal ethics was uh, uh, obtained for this research, cutting off the tails of lizards, but uh, Yong, S Yong Su Song. <laughs> I think uh, conference announcements are really uh, unlikely to win the competition, but anyway, thank you to Takeshi Koshiba. <laughs> and uh, to Christophe Petit. And the, uh, the final, um, anyway. so the final uh, talk, um, and so applause if you think this was the best talk, to Pierre Kartman and Jerome Van Foot. <laughs> I, I hope you didn't think I manipulated the election, but I think the rump session winners this year, uh, Pierre and Jerome, I have no prize for you. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but I do have one last late announcement. Uh, I believe that Peter Shaw has updated uh, a new paper on, pr on archive. Uh, it's entitled Bad Directions in Cryptography. Uh, he's been revising the famous 1976 paper of Diffie and Hellman. Uh, I'll read it to you. I've been evaluating its predictions and the present uh, culture. It turns out that Alice and Bob are not really friends. They're just on Facebook. They don't actually like each other and uh, they're mostly sending pictures of cats. Cryptography is not necessary. So that ends the rump session. Thank you very much. Uh, there is still uh, one prize to be awarded, which is to the best organizer of the rump session. So. <laughs>